Understanding the relationship between how a voltmeter works and a schematic circuit works is so incredibly important when it comes to troubleshooting. In this video, I'm going to walk through with you exactly what to expect in a simple three-wire circuit and show you exactly how at different points and in different scenarios, the voltmeters have different readings. So let's get going. So what we have here is your basic start-stop circuit. I've got a stop button, which has got normally closed contacts, a start button, normally open contacts. I've got a set of holding contacts. I've got my coil here, so it's my M coil, which will close the power contacts as well as my holding contacts. I have a green run light so that when the M runs or when the M coil pulls in, this is in parallel, so it will turn on and turn green. I have a set of normally closed overload re relay contacts. And down below, I have another M contact and a red light. So when the motor's not running, the light will be red. So what we'll do here is let's talk about these different voltmeters. So I have voltmeter A, voltmeter B, voltmeter C, voltmeter D, voltmeter E, and voltmeter F. We're going to assume that I've got a line here and a neutral here. And let's assume that our control power is on. So let's just give an assumption that it's going to be 120 volts. Now let's look at voltmeter A. This voltmeter A is reading from this point to this point in reference to each other. Now with this normally closed contact, this might as well be just a wire going through. So from this point to this point, I have no potential difference because there's no resistor in the way, there's no load, it's just one straight wire. So it'd be the same thing as taking this lead and putting it over here. So if I have no potential, I have zero volts. So in this situation, voltmeter A is gonna read zero. Moving over to voltmeter B. I've got potential right up to this line here, and then we have this open here. And this is where I see many people make a mistake is they would assume that on this side here, I've got some sort of um, references there as well. But if you look here, this goes to the load, and this goes to this light, and these are not engaged at this time. So what's going to happen is that I'm gonna read zero volts because I have zero reference point on this side. So whilst I have a voltage reference there, this will have no reference to that point there. Then I look on this side, voltmeter C. If I look to voltmeter C, I go to here, I have no reference because there's an open here and an open here. I do have a reference on this side, however, because I have my normally closed overload relay contacts, but again to neutral, but I have no reference point here. When we're using our voltmeters, we need to have both probes referencing something. So just like this one had a reference point to here, but not on this side, this one has no reference point on this side and a reference point here, so zero volts. And if we look across voltmeter D, these are all normally closed contacts. So this point here and this point here are basically the same electrically. So we're gonna have a zero volt drop. Down here, same idea, normally closed contact. So on this side and this side are the same points electrically basically, zero volts on voltmeter E. However, if we look at voltmeter F, I have got a load here that goes all the way through. So I've got a reference point to that side and I've got a neutral reference point to this side. I should read 120 volts at voltmeter F in this situation. So let's see what happens when the circuit's running. We'll take a look and see what's, what's going on at that point. Okay, here we have your basic motor control circuit. We've got a stop button, which is normally closed. We've got a start button, which is normally open. I've got ourselves a, oh, well, why is it on? Fart. So here what we've done is we've pressed down on the start. We've engaged M coil. M is fired up. It has closed this M here. It is also green. The green light here is in parallel, so it's running. We, again, none of the overloads are open, so we've got a straight line there, so that's engaged. Now when this is energized, the M coil is energized, this closed, but then this opened. So now I have an open here and I have no reference point, sorry, we have no red light running at that point. So let's go through and again, see what's going on with our voltmeters. So voltmeter A, again, same point electrically. So I'm going to have zero volts at that point. Voltmeter B, this is normally closed. So it's the same thing as having a normally closed contact here. I'm gonna have zero volts there electrically. Voltmeter C, however, if you look here, I've got a reference point going through, going through to this side and engaging. So I've got a reference point at that point, And then on this side, over to the neutral, I have a reference point there. So therefore, voltmeter C at this situation will read 120 volts. Voltmeter D at this point here will read zero volts because 
again, these are all normally closed contacts, so this point and this point are the same electrically. Voltmeter E will read zero volts because I have a reference point to this point here, but then on this side, I don't because this load is not engaged. So I have no reference point at that point. So basically E is gonna be a useless voltmeter at any given time. So I've got zero volts here. And again, because this is open, I have a zero reference point here and I have a reference point on this side. So voltmeter here, voltmeter F is reading zero volts as well. So let's take a peek see around the circuit one last time here. here. The situation that we're running into now is our overloads have tripped. So that has opened up these contacts here and that's gonna change a lot. So again, voltmeter A, basically it's a useless reading because we're reading across the same point electrically. As long as that stop button's closed, it's always gonna be zero volts. So you don't really need to put anything in here for that's just a useless gesture. Voltmeter B, when we look at voltmeter B here, again, it's got a reference point to this side, but because this is open on this side, it's gonna be a zero volt reference point as well. Voltmeter C, I could what I could do here is, and this is what I might do out in the field, is I would automatically, I'm reading zero, you can see why, because I've got the open overloads. What I might try to do is press down on the start button, and that way I would know that I should have power coming to this point here, but if I read zero volts there, then I know that there's something wrong on the overload side. Same thing with the green light doesn't turn on. Well, that's because the overloads are tripped and opened on that side. Voltmeter E, again, that's one of those useless positions because no matter what, we're gonna read zero volts because again, this is closed. That point and that point are the same electrically. Voltmeter F, we see that we've got this side is running fine. This side, we've got power all the way through and we're back to what we were in our original situation, reading 120 volts. So that's how you're kind of reading through. You notice that as we went through each scenario, you're gonna find that some voltmeters readings are un unnecessary. This one here, it's always gonna be zero volts. Basically this one here, you'll always have some sort of zero volt situation because even when it's engaged, it's gonna be closed, it will be the same. When it's disengaged, it means that I have nothing happening on this side, so I have no reference. This one does tell me a little bit of something, but for the most part, actually, I'm going to read zero volts. What I would generally do at this point, if I was reading across here, is I would not be reading voltage, I would be reading continuity to see if I had continuity from this point to this point. If I don't, these contacts are open. If I do have continuity between that point and that point, these ones are closed. This will tell me if this is running or if, if it's engaging. Now, if I press down on this button, this start button, and I have voltage at voltmeter C, that would tell me that there's, and this doesn't gauge, that tells me that the coil might be burnt out and that I would need to replace the coil. And I should see the green light turn on anyway. So if I press down on that, I see 120 volts there and the green light doesn't turn on, that tells me that the green light's probably burnt out. And then again, down here, this one's gonna read zero no matter what. And this one will, read some sort of voltage. So again, if I press this st uh, stop button, which will stop the circuit, this red light should be on as long as I have control power. If it's not, then that tells me that, that possibly the red light is burnt out. Now, why this is important for troubleshooting is, while it's really easy to see these circuits, the control wires, when they're actually out in the field themselves, can be all over the place. So what you would do is knowing that we would want to find physically where this point to this point is. So where these power wires are being wired to, to see this. So what I like to do with my classes is make them go through an exercise such as this so they understand what they should be reading at certain given moments. And so we go through the exercise of trying to figure that out with a schematic and then we go out to the lab itself and try it out. And so it is a helpful exercise in understanding where we should be reading voltages and where we definitely don't think we'll be reading voltages at all. If you found value in this video, make sure you hit subscribe. If you want to check out last week's video, hit the previous video. And if not, you can go ahead and hit the recommended video and YouTube makes a choice for you. See you in the next video.